So for those of you who've been following the many adventures of Magnus and the Monkey Mouse, maybe you might, might be wondering what they've got up to during the lockdown. So this story is called Magnus and the March 2020 Lockup, dedicated to our wise and wonderful Director of Health, Ashley Bloomfield. Magnus the cat had been watching the news and he thought he would honour the mice with his views. It's a crisis, he told them. The world is shut down. Travel is banned. There's no going to town. <laughs> I've stockpiled essentials. I don't miss a trick. I had to be a pushy and crafty and slick. I've made me a lock-up and built a fine fort, though accessing these round things proved risky and fraught. But I've plenty of cat biscuits, milk and some cheese. I'm not going to share them, for you might have fleas, which spread the infection in days long gone by, made deadly by rats, but no one knew why. Now there's a bug that is tiny but tough, contagious and deadly, and makes you feel rough. You mostly recover, but if you can't breathe, you could be a goner with little reprieve. You've got to make bubbles and stick to the rules. If you break them and sicken, you'll look like such fools. I'm keeping myself to myself from now on till somebody tells me this virus has gone. The mice thought a lock-up could be lots of fun. Their prayers had been answered, their holes had begun, for schools were shut down, and to stay out of trouble, everyone had to be safe in their bubble. So their first task they knew was to whip up some lather with washing up liquid, a bowl and warm water. Oh, they made quite a mess and their mother was cross. Get out of my kitchen, she said. Here, I'm the boss. But we've got to make bubbles, the young mice replied, which somehow we're told we must hunker inside. We think it's too hard for they just seem to pop before we get in them. <laughs> Don't tell us to stop. It's the wrong kind of bubble, fairly explained. Take them outside and get on with a game. Football is good, or how about marbles? Or we'll go and see Magnus and blow him some bubbles. Marbles it was on a run they had made, having dug down the slope of a bank with a spade. They joined drain pipes and spouting with seesaws and swings and raced with their favourites to see who would win. It was great, it was brilliant, it gave lots of fun. But then they got tired. It was time to move on. And Magnus's fort was too good to ignore. <laughs> they bided their time till they heard the cat snore. <clears throat> their plan was quite simple to uh, borrow a roll and leave a strategically positioned hole. So when Magnus woke up and the damage would found, his ramparts and towers might just fall to the ground. We'll keep a low profile for now, was their thought, but as they manoeuvred, the paper got caught and unravelled behind them. Oh dear, what a boob! For they found they had got home with a bear in a tube. Mickey unbidden, returned to the hole. In his hand was a wand, there was soap in his bowl. Magnus, he called out, wake up, come and see! How pretty these bubbles, how floaty and free! When Magnus sat up, he was truly appalled. The first thing he saw was a hole in his wall, with bubbles around him and soap in his eyes. His anger was roused. 
that became his demise. <clears throat> the mice were now watching in breathless suspense. The building was solid and sort of immense. <laughs> But now it was wobbling and tumbling down, while Magnus himself was knocked flat to the ground. Which wasn't that flat, for Magnus was round. Ah, Magnus roared his most terrible growl. You've just gone too far and this deed was most foul. I'll chew you to pieces, you've got no respect. I'm not breaking my bubble, I'm breaking your neck. He pounced on Makikiki who hadn't a chance and tossed him around in an evil mad dance. But something was tripping him, wrapping him round. And he looked somewhat mummified and helpless and bound. The toilet roll wrapped round him. Makikihi was wounded and bleeding and dazed, his arm looked quite broken. The mice were amazed that he was still breathing and hoped he would last till they got him the help that he needed and fast. In lockdown the mice did the best that they could. They splinted his arm with a bandage and wood. They tended his wounds and they put him to bed with plasters all over his newly clawed head. Mungerty banned them from Magnus's bubble. Just keep well away, just keep out of trouble. Get on with your schoolwork, there'll be no more play till you've learnt to be good and do just what I say. Well, with all that excitement the mice settled down and the days went on by it was still quiet in town. They played lots of games and they read lots of books and with practice turned into some reasonable cooks. Their Afghans were brilliant. Their ginger nuts burnt. The cheese puffs were lovely. The hot cross buns weren't. They picked up their hazelnuts, gathered the damsons and with tomatoes and apples made chutney and jam sons. Magnus got lonely. <clears throat> the mice kept away. Makiki grew better and stronger each day. And then when the virus had finished its run, Dr. Bloomfield pronounced, you may go out now, have fun. But what they had forgotten was school had begun. But they were so pleased to see their friends again and get back into re routine that it all seemed like a bad dream. <laughs>